Welcome to the Deadly Dixon channel. Today I'm going to be talking about psilocybin, the chemistry, effects, and brain science. I found this article a while ago. I really liked it. It had a, a nice roundabout way of a little bit of history, not too much. Uh, it'll definitely have words I cannot pronounce, so that should be fun. Uh, <clears throat> This is from the website SciTech. I will put the link to the article into the descriptions. I just read the article. I sometimes interject my own two cents here and there. And then at the end, you know, I sum it up and hopefully give credit. I think there's a name on the article. So, as I said, it's from SciTech Global, I believe. Psilocybin, The Chemistry, Effects, and Brain Science by Tessa Eskin. Good, I always like to give credit. Across the world, there exist over 180 species of mushrooms that naturally produce psilocybin, the ingredient that makes some mushrooms magic. Scientists believe this to be a defensive strategy, dampening the appetite of ants before they eat through the entire mushroom. But when ingested by humans, psilocybin has a much more interesting effect. For thousands of years, these mushrooms have been used in religious ritual to induce an altered state of consciousness or mystical experience. As usual, well, most of the time, the articles will have a highlighted area, and that'll be underlined sometimes also. That will be a link to whatever they're discussing. In this particular case, it says religious ritual, so it'll have a link to it. So those who see the link and want to hear, want to read it themselves, you could do a little bit more deep dives. That's why I kind of like this article also, as I continue now. These unearthly mushrooms chemically alter perception, thought, and emotions, inducing a sense of profound unity, bliss, and decentralization of ego. Many experience deep insights brought on by a fresh perspective on the internal and external world. Psilocybin appears to give the brain a full-on makeover, a psychological reset that can prompt positive life changes. It has been used to this effect throughout human history by shamans and priests under the veil of religious mystery. Long before the West had even developed the concept of human psychology, our ancestors were conducting group therapy assisted by natural psychedelics. Psilocybin American History American mushroom enthusiast R. Gordon Wasson, or Wasson brought psilocybin awareness to the U.S. mainstream in the 1950s when he was invited to an indigenous mushroom ceremony in Mexico. The experience inspired him to send samples of psilob, or psilobe, <laughs> psilocybe, or maybe it's a different thing, Mexicana, to a chemist, Albert Hoffman, of LSD fame, in parentheses. And Albert Hoffman is uh, underlined. You could hit that link. It'll bring you to, I'm guessing, an article on him. Hoffman isolated psilocybin in 1957 and went on to produce a synthetic version a year later. In 1970, psilocybin became a casualty of the war on drugs when the DEA classified it as a Schedule I substance. This was despite the fact that the psilocybin is neither addictive, dangerous, nor without medical use. On the contrary, research confirms psilocybin as an effective treatment for depression, addiction, and near-death anxiety of cancer patients. After rigorous testing decades later, the FDA recently granted psilocybin treatment as a, quote, breakthrough therapy. Accelerating the drug development and review process. This allowed researchers to further understand how psilocybin works, its magic on the human mind. 
So right there, I'll interject. This is why I kind of like the article. It gives a little bit of history, and I think that's always important. You know, who it was who brought it to detention and its casualty on the war on drugs, which is a real shame. There's some wake-up calls this country needs to face or should have faced back then, but now at least, okay, so let's give it that they're looking at it in a different way now, which is excellent, and I'm ecstatic about it. I'll continue. You've just had some kind of mushroom. Psilocybin is a... <laughs> Idol alkalamine hallucinogen with a high affinity to serotonin 5-HT. Monoamine neurotransmitters modulating our mood and behavior. The intensity of its effects depends largely on species, location, and handling. Though the taste is rather unpleasant, they are always ingested fresh, dried, in pill form, or brewed in tea. This is because psilocybin works through the gut. The acidic environment of the stomach converts it into psilocin, which binds to serotonin receptors called 2A. The hallucinogenic effect usually begins within 20 to 40 minutes and lasts around 3 to 6 hours. <laughs> okay, first off, I have mushrooms in my house, and I've been doing my own little thing. Yeah, you better be careful with that 20 to 40 minutes, because I think that's everybody's greatest story. Is, you know, I took mushrooms, and I didn't feel nothing. I took a bunch more, and like two hours later, yeah. So, it can last up to more, but hey, what do I know? I haven't done my studies. Well, not really good ones. Uh, where was I? Um, uh, it lasts around three to six hours. Colors change, patterns appear, and the senses become distorted and enhanced, while intense emotions arise. Time speeds up, slows down, or halts completely. Many experience a shift in perception of their place in the universe. They feel communion with a higher power. Hacking back into psilocybin's traditional use as the plant of the gods. Another reason why I chose this, it had that little borderline unteasing about the mystic and the supernatural, which I think is bullshit, but in this way, it's a better way to describe it. It works. Uh, what's next? An orchestra of the mind. What is actually happening within the brain is a process scientists call neuronal avalanching, a domino effect of neurological changes. Psilocybin creates a feedback loop of neuron activity and neurotransmitter release. As individual brain networks destabilize, psilocybin creates a global network across the brain. New pathways spring forth, inducing new insights for old problems. John Hopkins University professor Dr. Matthew Johnson likens this to an orchestra. Generally, the brain has a separate area that acts as different musical groups playing independently. Psilocybin acts as a conductor, communicating between regions usually strictly compartmentalized. This is what makes psilocybin so effective in a therapeutic context, allowing psychological movement for breakthroughs and emotional exploration. What's even more fascinating is that mushrooms perform the same function in the plant world. Mycelium helps plants and trees communicate by conveying messages, nutrients, and electrical impulses from one to another. Much like psilocybin creates a global network in the human mind. All mushrooms act as the global network of plant life. The Science of Psychedelic uh, before I start, I've done a couple of, uh, in this area, type of, um, I think I did how LSD works on the brain, but you can check my playlist of uh, Foundations of Wellness, most likely. The Science of Psychedelics. Consciousness and the human mind are among the greatest scientific mysteries to this day. While free research is still underway as to the exact effects of psilocybin on the brain, Scientists have posed several theories. We know that psilocybin directly inhibits the dorsal 
Rafi nucleus, DR, DRN, by binding to presynaptic inhibitory 5-HT1A receptors. <laughs> the DRN is the primary region of the brain that produces and synthesizes serotonin before sending it through the entire central nervous system. The DNR is also indirectly inhibited by the stimulation of H of 5H2 HT2A receptors on GAB ergic interneurons in the periaqueductal <laughs> gray. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna be famous one day, right? These fucking, I'm gonna be so wanted for these voice. I'm reading someone's fucking article. I'll probably get sued for it anyway. Anyway, I'll continue. This is the brain region that regulates autonomic function, motivated behavior, and responses to threatening stimuli. Both these mechanisms decrease overall serotonergetic tone, inducing the hallucinogenic effect on the 5-HT2A receptors in the cortex. This also disinhibits the norandronic <laughs> nor noradrenergic nucleus locus corellius. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Oh. And dopaminergic neurons, resulting in high release of norepinephrine and dopamine. If the, it is the surge of LC that induces the feelings of novelty and wonder experienced on psychedelics. Like, if I ever had to do a history, this might be the worst paragraph ever. Like, if they were blooper reels and shit. All right, I know anybody's dying for me to continue. The seat of consciousness. Researchers at John Hopkins University recently compared brain scans of participants after taking a placebo, and then after taking psilocybin. They found that the claustrum was significantly less active on psilocybin. The claustrum is the part of the brain responsible for setting attention and switching tasks. It is the thin sheet of neurons within the cortex that reach out to every other region of the brain. Francis Crick, who discovered DNA, believed this to be believed this area to be the seat of consciousness, awareness, and sense of self. It consists of a large number of receptors that are targeted by psychedelics. This could explain why psilocybin inspires feelings of interconnectivity and reduces the sense of self or ego. Together, these effects create a state of mind enhancing the potential for therapeutic processes. Progress. We are left with new insights and a fresh take on our sense of self and our place in the world. It is no wonder there is a, such a rich tradition of psychedelic mushroom use throughout human history. In a therapeutic environment, psilocybin can lead to deep psychological revelation, healing, and greater well-being. It turns out these mystical mushrooms are truly magical after all. And that is it. Wow. Whew. Man, that fucking paragraph's gonna fucking... I knew it was going to. I fucking knew it. That's why I even did this. I picked this one to go through. Okay, so... Let's sum this up. I have read, and I also take mushrooms like I'm doing now, and I'm doing my own little micro-dosing. I want to see a great shift, and I want it done right, so I'm happy that it's, uh, you know, progressing now. As I said, this war on drugs thing really kind of, you know, put a dampener on things. But if you look at the studies and the overwhelming uh, evidence that's coming in, I think we have a really strong tool, medicine now, to help people. 
But you got to be careful because they did this with um, with ketamine, I think. They saw all these breakthroughs, and now the type of article you see on. I wish I hope I'm saying it right, but let's say it's not ketamine. Let's say it's a certain drug. I'm not sure what it is, but the gist of it was it was hailed as a breakthrough, much like psilocybin. And now they're looking back at it and said they rushed things and they did things a certain way. But it's because it is peer-reviewed, is the scientific method that they're actually getting to this. But you still got to be careful, right? We all are human. We have our own quirks, our own biases, ways of thinking. But I've been reading article after article for years now. I, you know, I could say I've been doing it since I was a teenager, most likely to an extent. And it's just good to see it being treated respectfully in a certain way. I mean, I live in New York, and now marijuana is legal, and they're making efforts to um, not arrest people at the airport for under, what was it? Um, oh, man, my friend post posted it. Uh, I think it's like you can have under three ounces, and they won't confiscate it at the airport no more. That's huge in New York. Huge. You know, I've had talks about would it ever be legal in New York. And I know we're talking about mushrooms and psilocybin, but I think in a quicker way, this is going to be even more important. Because the benefits of resetting the brain seem to be widespread. And more articles come out, more studies, really good ones. And yeah, you got to be careful with how much. You know, we fast track certain things because they work, but they seem to work and then they don't. But at least in the end, hopefully the truth comes out. We can get these drugs under control. We could treat the war on drugs in a different way. As I think it should have been done from the beginning. So this was an article from SciTech. The, the website's like SciTech Global something. Uh, like I said, I'll put the link to the article in the description as I normally do. Thank you for joining me, listening to me mess up this fucking article. Poor, uh, what's her name? Tessa Eskin. <laughs> uh, you know, I like to give credit, but, you know, I'll probably, you know, just do them worse for them. So there you go. Be well, everybody. My best to you and yours. Take care.